Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jellies move through the water like boat oars. And while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. These tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say that these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on. In our number 9 spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as like a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge will slowly consume its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me, personally. In our number 8 spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the angler fish, these guys have a lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from the inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and kinda talented. In our number 7 spot today, we have the zombie worm. These worms were first discovered in 2002, where they were living in the bones of the carcass of a dead whale, nearly 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters deep in the ocean. The reason these guys have the common name zombie worm is because of the fact that their main food source is those same bones that they were first found living in. These guys love to eat bones, but in their own special way because of the fact that they don't have mouths or stomachs. Instead, they secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves the bones, which frees up the fat and proteins that are trapped inside. The worms then have their symbiotic bacteria that lives inside of them digest the fat and the protein. Here's the thing though, we actually don't know how the nutrients from the bacteria get to the worm. They either digest the bacteria somehow, or there is some sort of process where the nutrients get transferred. While when they were first found, they were chowing down on whale bones, zombie worms are happy to eat any kind of bones that they can come across, and they've actually been observed making a meal out of non-aquatic animal bones that somehow ended up in the deep sea. In our number 6 spot today, we have the barrel eye. This guy is one weird looking fish, man. The barrel eye fish is also known as the spook fish, and they of course get their names due to their appearance. These fish are relatively small and they are best known for their extremely unusual transparent fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered, there were so many questions surrounding them. At first, scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after some further research, it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate both up and forward. The fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in the depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,000 
12,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time, with its first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photograph of a live one was ever captured for the world to see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench anytime soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number 5 spot today we have the ghost fish. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along minding his own business has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. In our number 4 spot today we have the aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found not only in the Mariana Trench, but also in the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys' habitats make their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question, how did these guys find metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater? Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar-based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the sea floor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for like protecting our upset stomach from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shells and acts as a type of of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know guys, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 3 spot today we have basket stars. Basket stars are like the Mariana Trench cousin of the starfish and when you see them you can totally understand why. These guys have this same main kind of disc that you see on a starfish, but rather than five stiff arms, these guys have five long, slender, flexible arms that all branch out from themselves repeatedly to form even more little tiny arms, with the last branch usually ending up curled. There is no real rhyme or reason for the shapes of basket stars, as it just depends on how they grow. So while some look beautiful and almost like a webbing of lace, there are some that look absolutely chaotic. You know what they say? No two basket stars are the same. I don't think anyone has ever said that, but we're gonna start. Basket stars are able to navigate around the seafloor by wiggling their arms around, and they also have the ability to curl into a ball when they're feeling threatened by predators. They also do eat, as they have a mouth located on the underside of their disc, and they prefer to eat things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. In our number two spot today, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents because these giant tube worms live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria we talked about to live inside of them for their food, like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever, because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component in the exoskeleton of crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. One more quickly, but I swear, it's the last one. These tube worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay, 
Now I'm actually done. In our number one spot today, we have the predatory tuna kit, one of my favorite creatures to ever exist. They're so weird. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and seafloor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of their prey, their mouths will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles and they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right. And it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird, but one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world, and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Circle of Life. In May of 2017, on the coast of South Africa, there came quite the marine mystery that was leaving people absolutely shocked. During this time, there were three great white sharks that people found washed ashore. Definitely more than the average, I would assume, but that's not necessarily the most shocking thing in the world. What made this exceptionally strange, however, is that all of these sharks were missing their livers, and one of them was missing its heart. Yeah, that got a lot more weird didn't it? Scientists, of course, did some more research into these sharks, and after performing autopsies, they came to a conclusion of what the most likely culprit is orcas. Also known as killer whales for now very obvious reasons, these guys are actually known to attack other shark species to eat their organs, and the injuries seen on the ones found at the beach are definitely consistent with all the orca attack signatures. Livers are definitely one of the orcas' favorite snacks because they are so filled with fat and nutrients. In our number 9 spot today, we have the hairy sea monster. Back in 2018, this hairy sea monster washed up on a beach in the Philippines where people gave it the nickname the Globster. Other than the affectionate nickname, people were baffled as to what this hairy, globby thing could possibly be. The mass was about 20 feet or 6 meters long, and it was clearly some sort of gigantic but also rotting sea creature. Aside from the horrifying looks, apparently the smell was even worse, which honestly, just thinking about it, makes my stomach turn. Scientists explained that it was most likely that this gross sea blob was the remains of a whale. Of course, people asked about the hairy appearance, which experts say is likely just the appearance of the decomposing muscle fibers. So, a mystery no more, but still quite a fright. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Maine Monster. Back in 2018, along the coast of Maine, a 15 foot long sea monster made its debut. By the time this sea monster washed up on shore, it had already decomposed past the point of recognition, which definitely didn't help with its eerie and uncomfortable appearance. One of the people who witnessed it described it as a blob and called it, quote, pretty gross, which definitely definitely paints a picture in my mind. The thing with this creature though is that it was quite large, which of course made people more interested in what it could be or what it once was. Because of the large size, again, like the last one, people thought that perhaps it was the remains of a whale, but experts had a different story to tell. They said that this was in fact not a marine mammal, but rather a basking shark, which is the second largest shark species on the planet. In the end, an entire bulldozer was needed to remove this mass from the beach. In our number 7 spot today, we have the football fish. Okay, angler fish are usually found in the deep sea. They're a super creepy looking fish, many of their species are called sea devils because of how weird they look. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you know these guys. They have the little light bulb on their heads and they look incredibly menacing. So imagine someone's horror when they ended up stumbling upon one that had somehow washed up on shore. In May of 2021, so about a year ago now, a fisherman found the body of one of these creepy monsters at Crystal Cove State Park in California. It definitely was a shock, especially considering how this species of angler fish referred to to as a Pacific football fish is a type that usually spends its days about 3,000 feet or 914 meters below the surface of the ocean. Park officials were of course called to deal with the fish in the proper manner, but man, it definitely gave everyone who saw it 
quite the surprise. In our number 6 spot today we have sea lions. One Vancouver Island resident made a pretty terrible discovery back in 2020 as she was walking along a beach in Nanaimo. During this walk she unfortunately came across a sea lion that didn't have its head. Of course, this is never a good discovery, but matters were made much worse when she ended up finding 5 more sea lions in total with the same devastating injury. Of course, our instincts would be to think of some crazy and scary marine monster, but it turns out it's just the regular old land kind. What I mean by that is that a marine mammal expert for the area explained that the injuries are definitely deliberate, which means that there is someone or some people who are going around and doing this to sea lions. Just a good old classic terrible human being being awful. The expert also explained that some of these sea lions are stellar sea lions, which are an at-risk species, which certainly makes the entire crime even worse than it already was. In our number 5 spot today we have the Sakhalin Sea Wolf. This creature was found back in 2015 and when it was first discovered, people had absolutely no idea what in the world they were looking at. And to be honest, people still aren't exactly sure. Found on the shores of Sakhalin Island, which is located in eastern Russia, this is one creature that that was stumbled upon by Russian soldiers. It had an elongated beak which initially made people think that maybe it was the corpse of a dolphin, but people quickly pointed out that dolphins do not have fur, which was clearly seen on whatever this creature was. Some people even claimed to have seen paws on the creature, so really it's all up in the air at this point. Unfortunately, whatever this animal was is truly destined to stay a mystery because before a conclusion could be reached, it was washed back out to sea. In our number 4 spot today we have an eye. Florida is definitely no stranger to weird news and bizarre happenings, but this thing that washed up on a beach is definitely a little out of the ordinary for anywhere really. Back in 2012, as someone strolled along on Pompano Beach, which is said to be near Fort Lauderdale, they had the unfortunate circumstance of stumbling upon a perfectly intact eyeball that was about the size of a softball. Imagine. I'd never go to the beach again. This creepy discovery of course was handed over to the fish and wildlife researchers who were able to look into the ocular mystery a little further. They came to the conclusion that this eye once belonged to a swordfish, which if they have eyeballs the size of softballs, how big are swordfish? Way bigger than I once thought, apparently. Also, how did this eye manage to find itself floating by itself in the ocean? Well, it is said that based on the precision that it was cut out with, rather than some crazy fish attack, it seems like it might have been cut out with a knife by a fisherman who then tossed it back into the sea where it became someone's horrific discovery. In our number 3 spot today we have worms. Okay, so there's this marine worm, often called a fat innkeeper worm, and well, it looks like, you know, a human body part. Okay? They look weird, they look inappropriate, but they are a very real creature and they were found washing up on the shores of California in mass amounts back in 2019. I'm talking thousands of these pink marine worms all over the beach. What a sight that would have been. Biologists suspected that the influx of beached marine worms was due to a storm that produced strong winds and waves. This of course causes the sand to shift which then breaks open the burrows that these guys make their homes in and it brings them straight to the beach for some unsuspecting person to stumble upon and go, what the f happened here? In our number 2 spot today we have sea dragons. Australia has seen some record amounts of rainfall this year and while that has brought up a ton of challenges, it's also brought some strange creatures to shore. It is said that there have been about 10 times the normal amount of sea dragons washing up on shores just last month. Dr. David Booth, who is a professor of marine ecology at the University of Technology Sydney, explained what he thinks is the main culprit when he said, quote, clearly it's a result of some combination of the shocking weather, pollutants being washed into the ocean, and big surf. While these creatures can normally be found in Australian waters, it isn't normal for them to stray far from their homes. I mean, it's said that adults of the species only move about 50 to 500 meters away from where they were born, so they really like to stay put. Scientists are of course now conducting research to ensure that the populations of these animals stay at a level it should, especially considering how not too long ago they were a threatened species. In our number 1 spot today we have the Bondi Beast. Ok, so remember how with the sea dragons I was talking about how Australia has seen some weird creatures washed up on shore lately? Well, 
Here's another one. This creature washed up on Bondi Beach only for a jogger to come across just last month. The jogger who came across it took a video of it and posted it to Facebook with the caption, Can someone please tell me what this weird alien-like creature is that washed up on the beach at Bondi today? This strange creature is said to be about half a meter long with human-like lips and skin that is similar to a shark's. Of course, once the video went viral, many people with some good ideas came through, and as of right now, there are some people who agree on what possibly may be the most likely answer. Basically, they think that this strange animal may be a decomposing coffin ray with, quote, ballooned intestines. So, still quite a gruesome discovery, despite it maybe not being a mystery any longer. Starting off this countdown, we have the ultra black fish. There are a couple of ultra black fish that are so dark that they are almost invisible. At least 16 species of these fish have specialized skin, which makes them almost impossible to detect. Their skin is so unique that they absorb 99.95% of all photons. This makes them blacker than black. Even under a harsh spotlight, these creatures appear as mere silhouettes. That's why it's also so hard to capture a photo of them. One scientist said, and I quote, it didn't matter how you set up the camera or lighting, they just sucked up all the light. So in a way, these fish have a cloak of invisibility, and that's why it's so easy for them to sneak up on their prey. With features like this, it literally makes them seem like they came from another universe. In our ninth spot today, we have the brittle star. For this one, I want to take a look at one brittle star in particular, and that's one that's named the Game of Thrones star. That's because its appendages look like the thorny crown found on the second Game of Thrones book cover, A Clash of Kings. Now, what's weird about these creatures is that they don't have any brains or eyes, yet they somehow know what they need to do in order to survive. Like dude, it's literally a brainless organism wandering around the bottom of the ocean. And when fish get close to it, they reach out their tentacles and wrap them in a spiral and then eat them. Take a look at them. They literally look like creepy little brainless aliens. I refuse to believe that they're real. Like, I mean, obviously they are real, but like, that's a creature straight out of a horror film. In our eighth spot today, we have the black swallower. This is a deep sea fish with a big appetite, and it can handle more than it looks like it can. That's because it's slender in size, but its stomach can expand up to 10 times its original size. In fact, it can swallow big fish whole, and then the fish stays in their stomach, which gets stretched into transparency. In fact, sometimes their food starts rotting in their stomach before they even get a finish digesting it. No wonder it was given the name the Swallower Fish. Just look at that thing. In our seventh spot today, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. Now this is one of the sea creatures that is considered to be ultra black, so it easily blends into the depths of the ocean where no light reaches. Now this creature literally looks like an alien from Predator. Look at this, look at its creepy beady eyes and sharp teeth and like, long chin whiskers. It's undeniably creepy. Now, the males are small. They grow to be about three inches in length. Now, they're the weird ones. They have no teeth, no chin whisker thing, and no stomach. And since it has no stomach, it's unable to eat. Isn't that weird? It literally lives only long enough to mate, and then it dies. Now, the female black dragons are the scary ones. These ones can grow to about two feet. Yes, two feet. And they're the ones with the big fang-like teeth and they have that whisker or barbell. At the end of that whisker thing, there's this little light that can turn on to attract prey. So fish swimming by are like, ooh, what's this glowy thing? I hope it tastes good. And then they go to eat it. And then the black dragon is like, psych, it's me. And then they gobble the fish whole. They also emit poison, which is very dangerous and deadly to their predators. I swear, this video is making me scared of the ocean now. In our sixth spot, we have the zombie worm. In another universe, we have worms that live in the ocean and devour bones. Just kidding, they're real, and these zombie worms are from our universe. Again, I really don't understand how they are real. So these worms are about one to three inches, so they aren't that big. However, they are very creepy. These tiny things like to devour great big whale bones, and their style of eating is pretty weird, especially since they don't have mouths or stomachs. So basically, they secrete an acid from their skin that is so strong that it can dissolve bones. This then breaks down the bones' fats and proteins from the inside, which they then digest. How delicious. Now, they don't just attack whale bones, though. They'll tackle fish bones, even 
cow bones. I know what you're thinking, how are cows in the ocean? Well, sometimes cows or other animals get dumped into the ocean, so they'll take whatever they can get. That's not even the weirdest part, okay? The weirdest part is that the male zombie worms live inside the female ones. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. Just one. Again, how is this real? Like it literally sounds made up. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hagfish, also known as slime eels. Even though they aren't eels. Now, these ones gross me out because they literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. Here's an image of them literally eating a dead shark. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and eat them from the inside out. Ooh. But not only that, they secrete the slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of its attackers. Take a look at this video of it repelling a shark. Like what? The shark literally went to chomp it and then it got deterred and the hagfish was left unharmed somehow. Moving on to number four, we have the three-eyed fish. Now, when this creature was discovered in 2011 by an Argentinian man, people went crazy. So he was out on a fishing trip with some friends when he caught this fish, a literal mutated three-eyed fish. Now, it's quite possible that you've heard of this fish before, because in The Simpsons, there is a three-eyed fish known as Blinky. Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant in season two, episode four. So people were like, oh my God, The Simpsons predicted this fish. It was especially eerie since the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility and the water is pretty polluted. Honestly, anything with multiple eyes are not from this world, they're just not. In our third spot today, we have the mutant sea creature. In 2018, a strange looking sea creature was found floating along the shore of a beach in China. Everyone was like, what is that? And they were scared to go near it. I mean, it wasn't anything they had ever seen before, but one man wasn't afraid. So he actually went near it and picked it up. And that's when the animal started moving its head and limbs. This creature, who is not yet identified, has a human-like head with some sort of short stubby arms and legs. Theories range from a new species of sea life to a mutated starfish or a mutated sea sponge. What do you think it is though? Whatever it is, it's very creepy and alien-like. In our second spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now this is unlike any shark I have ever seen before, and that's because it has the weirdest face ever. Like I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like a shark. That's what I imagine a human crossed with a shark would look like. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. It was thought that 13 feet was the biggest that they could grow to, but in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big these creatures can truly get. Now this thing has one of the creepiest looking faces. It's got a super long nose with a weird Voldemort nostrils, pink flesh, making it look like it was skinned alive. And of course, look at its sharp teeth. But it gets worse. These sharks don't hunt their prey down. Instead, they wait for their prey to come to them. They're just chilling in the water. And once a fish gets close enough, they launch their jaws out and clamp down on them. Yeah, their top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments so they can reach out and extend its mouth to grab its prey. And its mouth can launch out to about 10.1 feet per second. And its mouth opens super wide. It can open at a 111 degrees angle. And in our number one spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Now this fish, literally has a see-through head. Not only that, but the thing that you see there, which looks like a brain, is not a brain. It's actually its eyes. Their eyes can rotate in all different directions. They can even look up to see above them through their see-through head. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but how is this a real creature? I'm sorry, but this fish has a glowing see-through head. Like, that's not normal. Number 10, giant squid. 
Easily one of the most feared creatures by human and fish kind alike, the giant squid is an almost mythological beast, being so elusive to researchers that one wasn't even captured live on film until 2006. Being the largest invertebrate on Earth, it can grow to over 50 feet, at least the ones that we've seen, which is more than three times the size of a great white. All that they would need to do to take down a shark is attach one tentacle. From there, their suction cups would be powerful enough that the shark couldn't swim away and the squid could wrap the rest of its arms around it and begin to bite through its skin with its massive beak. From there, it's all but certain that the shark would perish, though some sharks have been recorded with suction marks and scars from what could only be these colossal creatures, so they're right to be scared. Number 9. Dolphins while these cute and clever creatures may seem cuddly on the outside, they're actually dangerous killing machines, and sharks know it. With sharp teeth and a pointy, battering ram-like snout, dolphins pack a mean punch, and when grouped together, become a pod of predators. By landing a few well-placed, high-speed blows, a dolphin can rupture the organs of the shark, and then come in for the kill with their friends, making an easy meal of the so-called king of the ocean. Researchers have shown time and time again just how intelligent dolphins are, are, and they use their intelligence to outsmart and outlast pretty much everything in the sea. So even though we love to swim with them, sharks have learned and adjusted their behavior to porpoisely steer clear. Number 8. Sea Turtles Cowabunga dudes! Since sea turtles are my favorite animals, I had to include them on this list, even though their main predators are larger sharks. The reason that I could include them though is because some of them have actually been known to wound a shark or two within their long lives. Researchers have attached glorified GoPros with a tracker called Smart Tags to some of the sea turtles in order to track their movements and activity, and some of what they found was rather shocking. While being attacked by a tiger shark, one turtle actually managed to take a chunk out of its gills with a well-placed bite, causing the shark to make a hasty retreat. While this was a defensive maneuver, it certainly shows the power that these guys hold back in their shells. And that shark certainly learned a lesson about fighting with these lean, green biting machines. Before we get on to our next creepy creature, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us out so that we can keep bringing you the most amazing videos. Number 7. Hagfish While this slippery little fish may look like an easy meal for the hungry shark, they're actually hiding a very interesting trick up their sleeves, snot. That's right, the hagfish's main offensive and defensive mechanism is to excrete a mucus through their skin which is specially designed to expand in salt water, making it 1,000 times more dense than other animal mucus. They use this slime to trap other fish so that they can bite their teeth into their prey's flesh while they sink to the sea floor, and they have been known to tangle with sharks. While they're not necessarily pack animals, hagfish will fight together when provoked, and they can use their mucus to clog the gills of larger fish, including sharks, causing them to go into shock or even die, so that they can be eaten by the slimy hagfish. The moray eel takes our number six spot because of their vicious and predatory nature, as they often attack nearby sharks along with anything else unlucky enough to cross its path. Lurking under reefs and stones on the seafloor, the moray will latch onto its prey with not one, but two sets of jaws think the xenomorph from alien and devour it whole and sharks are not free from this fate there is quite a bit of footage showing these eels fighting and gobbling up smaller sharks, though it takes quite a bit of time to swallow them completely, like how snakes eat. Sharks have learned to stay away from the hunting grounds of these lanky killers, and those that don't find themselves in double jeopardy. Number 5. Box Jellyfish There are at least 51 different species of box jellyfish in the ocean, and every single one of them is extremely dangerous, especially to humans. But what about sharks? While jellyfish are not predatory in nature, they possess some of the most efficient ways to kill. Multiple tentacles, which when touched will inject venom into the skin, causing pain, nerve damage, and even cardiac arrest. But sharks have way tougher skin than us, so the most damage a jellyfish can do to a shark is through its eyes, where it can actually leave a shark blinded from the sting. Younger sharks that have yet to develop their tough skin, however, can easily be temporarily paralyzed or even killed by a box jellyfish sting. So they have learned to watch for these beautifully dangerous floating creatures and swim the other way. Number 4. Electric Eel 
Though it may not be a true eel, being closer to a catfish or carp than other eels, its name is not a complete lie, as they pack a powerful shock of up to 650 volts, more than five times what is pumping through your wall sockets. It achieves this marvelous feat by using specialized organs filled with electrocyte cells, similar to tiny batteries, to generate small amounts of electricity, moving sodium and potassium around to create a charge. Since these cells are arranged like batteries in a series, the charge builds up and can be released all at once on command, usually as a defense mechanism. When in groups, as they often are, they create a deadly pool of electricity and use it to deter and kill anything that may dare encroach on its territory. Its shock is enough to kill humans and even sharks, great white or otherwise, and they're not safe from this terrifying creature. Number three, hippos. Our only land animal on the list, the hippo is one of the few that exists in areas where sharks may be ready to feed. In some parts of Africa, bull sharks have adapted to living in fresh water and have made their way into the watering holes frequented by some of the world's most dangerous animals. Hippos are widely acknowledged to be more dangerous to humans than sharks, being able to run as fast as us on land and even faster in the water. We'd surely be caught and crushed by their massive jaws. It is estimated that 500 people are killed by hippos every year year, and their bite force of 1,800 newtons is enough to snap a crocodile clean in two. While the hippo has the strongest bite force of any land animal, the bull shark has the strongest bite force of any shark and makes for a fierce fight. There have been multiple encounters documented in the tidal wetlands of Africa where these two titans faced off, most likely as an accident from the shark getting too close. But if it was to be caught by the hippo, it would surely be game over for the bull shark. Number two, stonefish. This next terrifying creature is a threat to sharks not because of its size or teeth, but because it is the most venomous fish in the world. Though surprisingly, this isn't its main method of attack. Using its fantastically developed camouflage, the stonefish blends into the seafloor easily, awaiting its prey swimming overhead and attacking quickly in just one hundredth of a second, then returning to its hiding place. The 13 spines on its back are used defensively, only engaging when attacked or unwittingly approached. The spines inject poison into the victim's system, causing pain, paralysis, tissue and organ damage, and finally death. Obviously fatal to humans, many sharks have found themselves on the wrong end of a stonefish and ended belly up. And finally, our number one spot goes to the Orca. While commonly believed that the great white shark is the top of the food chain, that isn't quite true. Fittingly named the killer whale, orcas are well known for eating pretty much anything in the sea, including and especially sharks. They hunt in large groups or pods and can swim about twice as fast as a great white while also being four times as large, making them the most fearsome predator in the ocean. Their large teeth and breakneck speeds make literal mincemeat out of sharks, and it even seems that orcas attack sharks just for sport, not eating their entire body but just the nutrient-rich liver and Many cases. Though they may seem friendly with their spots and smiles, make no mistake, killer whales have their name for a reason, and sharks know it. Mm -hmm.